Tune in Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the Your Body is Your Pharmacy radio show. Hear from the doctors that were among the first in the U.S. to merge the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda and natural medicines with the advances of modern medical science. Listen to pioneer doctors Varender Sodi, Shalinder, and Anju Sodi to keep up with some of the latest medical advances and learn from some of the true leaders of Ayurvedic medicines every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. with the Your Body is Your Pharmacy radio show on Day C1250 AM, radio that listens to you. <clears throat> Hi guys, this is uh, Dr. Virendra Sodi, and uh, I'm very excited. I'm doing this program remotely today from uh, the beautiful Oregon coast, Newport, and this is a kind of a new experience for me. But uh, I thought it would be wonderful to keep in connection with my listeners and uh, who has been very loyal. We have been listening a lot of good positive feedback, and uh, I really want to thank everybody who's listening to the program. Uh, this is a wonderful way of spreading the way our body can heal. This program is Your Body is Your Natural Pharmacy, and we make everything on demand. Body makes every damn chemical, medicine, drugs you need on demand. So that is the whole purpose of this program, to let you know that there are wonderful ways of natural healing your body has. I'm not putting down the drug treatment here, because, but majority of the time, we are overdrugged in this country and rest of the world. And... Uh, that's my purpose, to help your body. Yes, drugs have a place, but not majority of the time they don't have a place. So one of the topics today is anxiety disorders, and this is very common. Uh, it's almost 20% in the adult population and around 25 to 30% in the kids. Uh, girls are more affected, or almost 30% girls are affected with the uh, stress and anxiety disorders. So you can see that almost one-fifth to one-fourth population of the world is going to be affected with anxiety disorder. So first of all, before we go jump into the full form of it, uh, you guys can call in if you have any question at one eight four four three zero one one two five zero. Again, the number is eight four four three zero one one two five zero. And if you have any question regarding anxiety disorders or any other health concerns you have, and I can speak in Hindi, English, Urdu, Punjabi, and, uh, you know, most welcome to call me on those languages. I will be happy to answer your questions. So what is anxiety? The anxiety is a very normal process for every one of us. It's actually an inbuilt mechanism in us for protection. So, for example, you know, uh, you have a homework and you're anxious about it. So what the body's doing is, okay, oh, I need to do this homework. And uh, so that is, body's trying to get your attention for it. So when you are done with your homework, or it, it is actually making you to plan to do your homework, when you have decided to do that uh, your homework, now the body is over with it and says, okay, I've done my work. But if you go on pondering, if you go on worrying, oh my God, I have to do my homework, I have to do my homework, I have to do my homework. So now see what you're doing? You're not doing your homework, but you are you go on thinking about it, which process is not good for you. So you are wasting your energy. So the analogy which I use, like you have a a energy molecule and it's revolving around in a circle and circle and circle. So you're not moving. And if you look at it, you have not covered an inch of the distance. So that's exactly what you do with anxiety. You know, if you have anxiety and he says, okay, I need to do this and this work. And usually what I do in my personal, and I teach my resident doctors the same way, that you have a notebook with you and write down the 10 most important things you need to do on that day. And you get it done. You put it down. And then you just let it uh, run down the list what you have to do, and then as you get it done, be over with it. So anxiety will be over. This is one of the techniques which I'm going to teach you a little later again. But this is the very easy, normal response. But what happens when we are not getting the over with that anxiety that I have to do this work over and do this work again and again and again? Then we are going into disorder. And so most of our population, around one fourth to one fifth population, is suffering with some kind of anxiety disorder, and it has caused a big problem, and people can get withdrawal symptoms, so they can just, you know, not be very social, they're not talking to each other, 
or even uh, at home, they, the kids are not talking to their parents and the parents are not talking to the kids. Uh, the spouses are not talking to each other. Friends are not talking to each other. So that causes a bigger social uh, misbehavior. And also it, what it does, it affects your school performance, especially in kids. And at, in adults, it uh, uh, helps. It uh, doesn't help with the your job performance. You know, you are not performing what you're supposed to do. Uh, the eating habit changes. Some people, when they are under anxious conditions, they are eating more. Some people are completely going into not eating at all. So, a lot of weight gain has been associated with anxiety because when people go under anxiety mode, they are eating food they should not be eating. And you know what they eat? They are eating sugar. The most important wonderful thing in your life sugar but sugar is not our best friend and one of the interesting thing which you need to look at it look at the mother nature tell me where is the sugar you can say yes you know there is sugar there is sugar in the fruits yes there is a sugar in the fruit but if you have one apple and you squeeze the whole apple you may not get around half teaspoon of sugar out of it and again if there is a sugar it is bound to so many things especially the fiber, which does not allow the release of the sugar into your system. The all forms of sugar, like your sugar cane, your maple syrup, your agave syrup, which is considered pretty healthy, but still those are man-made things. Uh, for example, for sugar cane, we are squeezing so much liter of sugar cane, and we get the dehydrate that and turn it into a sugar. Now you have a very concentrated form of sugar. The only Natural sugar is honey, and uh, it's a combination of many sugars too. So, but again, you don't want to eat any of these sugar too much. Yes, in a day, if you take consume two teaspoon a day, that should be perfectly okay. More than that, your body does not need it, and it causes some problem. So, what we are when we are doing a lot of sugar or carbohydrates, which is another form of sugar, which is called complex carbohydrates. Uh, they are uh, complex means they have a bundles of uh, sugar molecules to grab, bound together, and they cause problem too. So now once you have the anxiety, so you are uh, not, I neither have a good performance at the school, uh, neither you are scoring well, uh, if you are at a job, you're not doing your job properly, you're not eating properly, you have a changed sleeping patterns. Most of these people who are anxious will wake up around 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning thinking about the things they need to do are worried about it, oh my God, what's going to happen with that one? So again, you can see when you're disturbing your sleep pattern, the sleep is the most important healer in your life. Everybody needs to sleep and you need to sleep at night. You don't need to sleep in the daytime. Even people who work in the graveyard shift, they have a lot more diseases like blood pressure, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, as much as 30 to 40% more than the comp then compared to the normal people who go to bed at 10 o'clock and wake up by 6 o'clock. And that should be the way we should be all sleeping. So now you have a sleep disturbance and you have uh, all the uh, eating disorders, uh, not eating properly, and you have uh, the job performance, school performance alone. Uh, so what the symptoms are, people people will can have a racing heartbeat. You know, they are uh, the heart is just jumping out of the chest and they have a rapid breathing. The body gets into tension and your muscle gets very tense especially in the neck and the your shoulder area when you put your hand on the uh, these kids or these adults you know these they are so tense like you're touching a steel rod rather than the muscle uh, they can get sweaty palms you can get nauseated uh, people get a little trembling hands and legs and uh, some people even cry you know uh, because of the stress they cannot cope with it so you can see that we are going into a wrong direction with this whole stuff. and uh, But if you are able to cope up with that one, then you're not. So you should use anxiety to help align the process which you need to do rather than going into that mode of uh, uh, the distress, which all the symptoms which we are we discussed about it. The, the sad part about anxiety is that more than 90% uh, the guys who has done suicide has anxiety or depression in them. So that is a very serious uh, thing because people have a suicide or anxiety increase many, many, many fold people who have anxiety disorders. And uh, in, in the, even in the last 30 years, 
the the teenagers especially has become more depressed and more anxious uh, since we have been keeping the statistics on it. So there has been increased incidence of uh, uh, the suicides and anxiety disorders in the kids. Even in the adults, the uh, the, su- the suicide and anxiety have increased in the adults people too. So basically, what what can cause you to go into ang- anxious states? So some people are naturally shy. It starts at your home, by the way. Uh, the parents who are not open to each other, who are not open to their kids, parents who are not cordially treating their kids properly, uh, you are start to program your kid in a wrong behavior. So very important that uh, in a family where the husband and wife is there, uh, they both need to be on a cordial relationship. So that is going to be very, very important. If you are living in a single family uh, home where the, there is a one parent taking care of the kid, you also need to have a very open and a very cordial relationship with your kid. Because uh, if you are cordial with your kid and open with your kid, you are going to have a much better response of not being anxious. Uh, and if you are a female, Certainly, female has a lot more anxiety behavior than the than the guys, and uh, so that also important that the female is uh, uh, properly understood and she is able to speak up what she needs to say. Uh, a lot of time, people has a hard time expressing themselves, and when they are not able to express themselves, they are going to have issues. Then can, there can be lots of other you know reasons people can be anxious. One of them is you know, and if you are in a marriage stage, divorce or uh, death in the family or a spousal disease or health concerns uh money is a big one a lot of people go under stress because of the uh, money things and they get into anxious mode uh the economy of the world can go up and down and we can have issues where uh the economy is doing good and everybody is doing good and we're buying expensive houses and expensive cars and all of a sudden the economy take a downturn and uh, then all of a sudden we have those uh, a lot of uh fall and uh, the houses are going for uh, the foreclosures and people lost the jobs and they have those expensive tools they can't keep up will create a so some of those anxieties are man-made so again i think you need to understand what is the cause of anxiety and how you can help that process there uh the parents who are anxious has more anxious kids so very important as a parent that you need to be very, very, you know, cognitive of the experiences you what you have, and uh, sometimes the parents has been abused by their folks, by their parents, and they are also not aware of it. So going into for counseling is a very good idea, because then that way you know you are going to help and stop that process right there. Uh, so. When people come to me with anxiety, like for example, a few weeks ago, a young girl came to me and she has been not sleeping properly and she has been very worried and she has been having body aches and pains all over the places. And uh, uh, then, you know, she, she says, Dr. Suri, I, I don't know what's going on with me. So I said, what's going on with you? She says, oh, I have an exam which I need to take. And uh, I am not, you know, feeling very well, and uh, I have body aches. And it looks like I have a fever. Uh, when we checked, there was a no fever, but she she has a rapid heart rate. So clearly, her situation, she was not uh, uh, taken her exam as a normal process, which every one of us, when you're going to school, has to do that process, and she's taking it to the next stressful situation and creating all the symptoms in her so what what we did when we said okay um you need to breathe uh you need to calm down you need to write down what you need to do and we put her on some herbal supplement which i'm going to talk to you a little later here and she is phenomenally good and i i'm hoping that she's going to take her exam in coming weeks and she will going to come out with flying colors so there there's are tools which we can do to help the whole process so uh you know if you have any question you guys can call me at 18443011250 and i will be very happy to uh respond to your uh, response to your uh, questions and uh, this is dr sodi 
in the program, Your Body is Your Natural Pharmacy. Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. Yes, so we are talking about anxiety. So there are many treatment methods available for anxiety. So I'm going to talk about the most natural to the most... uh, uh, drastic drug treatment, but no. Let me let me do it backwards. Let me say that what the drug treatment is available and what you can do naturally to help the anxiety. So there is a lot of slew of drugs which are used for anxiety disorders, and one of them, which we call them SSRIs, or serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and uh, these drugs are uh, commonly like a Citalopram, Celexa, Lexipro, Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft. You might have heard all those names. So these are very commonly prescribed for the people who have anxiety. But the problem is they have lots of side effects. The one of the they, they come with a black box warning. What that means is that they have shown to increase more suicidal attempts or suicides people who are taking those drugs. And uh, uh, there is, according to one study, when people uh, were who were taking these drugs has almost double the uh, suicides than people who were taking placebo. So yes, people they had depression, but they were not on the drugs. But people who are taking drugs, they have almost double suicide. So there were d- suicides in the placebo group too, but there was double the the suicides in the people who are taking these drugs. So you can see that, you know, that's not a fix. Even according to National Institute of Health, the these drugs are not the fix for anxiety disorder. They are symptom maskers. And sometimes, yes, you do need to have these uh, antidepressant drugs or anti-anxiety drugs, but uh, they are not going to cure it. Who is going to cure is you. And uh, so... The one of the other uh, the drugs which we use they are called uh, uh, the uh, tricyclic uh, uh, the uh, tricyclic compounds. Uh, looks like we have a caller on the line. Uh, caller, go ahead. Hello, Doctor Sodi. This is uh, Anup Molukuri calling. Um, I'm listen- I was listening to you discussing about the causes. Uh, of uh, various types of anxieties, and uh, um, I, I heard uh, you talking about uh, uh, growing up in abusive household, and this is something I see a lot in my practice, where um, a lot of people will uh, will have gone through abuse or some sort of criticism when they're growing up, and then they always judge themselves and criticize themselves with. Uh, in the same way, even after they've grown up, I, if they talk to someone and someone says something uh, to them more direct, they feel like it's a criticism. And so that adds to their day-to-day anxiety. How do you, like, helping people, like, helping to clear those old beliefs about themselves and uh, the fear about themselves? I know. Thanks for calling, and you know, and uh, you have been a very wonderful person, and I know you very well. <laughs> this is great. You, you call, uh, but the thing is, uh, uh, again, you know, uh, whenever we are born, we are born with a very wonderful hardware, and then we start writing the software on it, and the software comes from your parenting, from the schooling, from the environment we grow up. Uh, just recently, a case has come to my attention that. Uh, one uh, Asian kid who is uh, going to school and he has been bullied because people are thinking that he's a Muslim. And, you know, so one thing is which we are now creating a societal pressure on the kids that all the Muslims in the world are bad. And it's funny that there are, you know, fundamentalists in every religion, in every part of the society, but we can take those few examples and apply to the rest of the world. So, Exactly. So when we are doing the wrong programming, we are not helping that process. So one of the things is it's very important for parents to judge themselves. But if you are not a healthy parent, you're not going to program your kid right. So every parent has the responsibility 
to be healthier and it's mental, emotional, and physical health, not uh, the just one physical health. You can do workout. Yes, that's wonderfully good. But you also have to do a mental and emotional balancing there too. So what I teach a uh, lot of these my you know uh, patients is uh, learning how to do meditation. Meditation is a very phenomenally good. One other thing is you know there is a the one of uh, very interesting uh, uh, Vedic philosophy is uh, power of now. What is going to happen now is the only thing. What has happened in the past, I can't change it. And what is going to happen tomorrow, I can't change that either. So what I can do is I can change the current, and that will clean up my past and also clean up my future. So that leaving that's the philosophy of Gita, which has said, okay, the the now is so short that if you start living from moment to moment, that makes a huge difference. And uh, again, it's very easily said than done. Because we all, you know, get so much hung up what has happened in the past. Uh, so a lot of those people who has, has abusive families and relationships, one of them is first they have to pardon themselves because they think they were part of that uh, uh, stuff there. They, they had done something wrong. And uh, again, if they cannot forgive themselves, they are going to get into that trap back and forth again and again and again. So first they have to pardon themselves. That they have to forgive themselves. And then they have to forgive the others who were part of it because that's maybe they did not know how to do it. And if you are, if you're still having some difficulties, uh, counseling will be a good way. Talking to your friends who know, uh, you know, are your family friends who has a good behavior, uh, who you can look as a, a mentor and can help that process too. Meditation is a phenomenally good tool. Uh, going inside you and learning who you are and what are your potentials. Uh, yoga, breathing exercises, which I, uh, you know, which is very heavy emphasis on healing. So, Anup, uh, does it uh, does it answer your question, or you have some th- some more more answers or more questions? Absolutely, it does. Do you want to? Um, I really do find uh, that getting emotional, um, mental emotional support as well as spiritual uh, help is so beneficial. And uh, just wanted to leave you one more question. I'll take my answer off uh, off the air. Is that okay, sir? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, uh, w- with the idea of uh, breathing work and meditation you mentioned, I had been uh, looking recently at research of the heart math and things like that and finding that how the uh, how breathing, uh, even, a, you know, training yourself to breathe kind of changes the body chemistry to allow uh, the whole body to settle down and it kind of reverses the body chemistry that goes on when we get stressed out or when we get anxious. Um, Could you speak to that a little bit, sir? Thank you. Yeah, sure. You know, just just to give you one example, uh, recently I saw a around 25 years old girl and she came to me with the uh, PCOS, the polycystic ovarian syndrome and anxiety history. And uh, uh, she is anxious because she wants to become pregnant uh, in her near future. And but she has a history of PCOS, and when you have a, the polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, females has a hard time getting pregnant. So one of the things which I asked her to do is alternate nostril breathing. So when you alternately breathing from the one side of the nose and letting out through the other side, and then breathing through the other side and letting through the other side, uh, which is called alternate nostril breathing or anulom vilom in Sanskrit, you are calming down your right brain, left brain, and when you're doing the, that you're also calming down your pineal gland, and which is the master gland and controlling all your hormone releases in the body. So what you brought up is very good. The research is showing what we have learned several thousand years ago, that when you are bringing the body to its back to the balance situation, body has its own mechanism of healing. The healing is not outside. The healing is inside us, and we can create that healing process just by syncing. So I, like, you know, when you are going on a master computer, when you're trying to access the, from your laptop, the master computer, uh, are you going on Google? You have to sync. When you're syncing with the mother nature, your body knows exactly what to do. And uh, I'm very glad there's a lot of tons of research that has now been shown on meditation, breathing exercise. Even, uh, uh, you know, we have breathing exercise, which you breathe from the left side and you breathe through the outside, uh, uh, right side out. And then 
which is called the Sure Bhedi and Chandra Bhedi uh, breathing exercises. And they have shown that when you do the cooling versus hot breathing, which is a, a Sure Bhedi, which is hot, and the Chandra Bhedi, which is the cooling, you almost double the calorie burning. So, which is interesting that how our ancestors were able to figure that out, that how to, you know, how these breathing exercises can be, have a wonderful effect on us. And uh, so basically what we're doing, the breathing is the most essential part of our existence. If you don't breathe more than one minute, everybody's calling 911. And so you breathe 16 to 18 times per minute, and if you're not breathing, and most of us are breathing around 30 to 40 percent, when you breathe to the full capacity, we are supplying oxygen to every cell. And the oxygen is not the only thing, because when you breathe oxygen, you're also making carbon dioxide. Again, there's a balance. When you not have enough oxygen, you're not going to have enough carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is very relaxing in itself. And so we have, you know, a balance. Again, the Ayurvedic medicine is not about the going into one extreme or to the going to the other extreme. It's the balance. And when you create the balance, body automatically knows what to do. So we were talking about the treatment, and we talked about the SSRIs like uh, Prozac and Paxil and Zola. The next part of the treatment is tricyclic compounds, and these tricyclic compounds are the most common, like amitriptyline, and uh, uh, there's tons of other you know names like a tofranil and a vivectil and you know, those drugs which are com commonly used are doxepin again they have uh, lots of uh, uh, side effects and one of the side effects is arrhythmia and sometimes you need to have ekg monitoring done and uh, this also carry high risk of fatalities due to overdose uh, so you can see that again that's you know can have some its own side effects the another commonly used drugs are serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors are commonly called as SNRIs. And these drugs are like Cymbalta, which is a very commonly prescribed drug, and Pristique or Efaxor. And they have, again, slew of uh, side effects. And most of these uh, SSRIs or SNRIs are tricyclic compounds, also carry a very severe side effect. In, in my clinic, we see that all the time, sexual dysfunction. What I've seen is that even young male or female who has been on Cymbalta or Prozarc or Paxil, their hormones drop drastically. Like in male, the normal testosterone level uh, in an adult should be around 600, 700, and they may come to me with a couple hundred or maybe lower than that. So when you don't have a normal amount of testosterone, you don't have a just or you don't have that will to do the work which you need to do and so yes on the one hand we may be able to making these people little tranquil but at the other end these people are fatigued and tired they don't have the good energy in them so the another uh, class of drug which is used is called benzodiazepines or uh, the valium class you know and they are xanax and Clonazepam, Elprazam, Lorazepam, there's a lot of those drugs. And one of the very addictive drugs which you can use. Again, all these drugs does not fix the problem. They are not going to fix your problem. So you have to understand that that is not the fix for your anxiety disorders. And uh, so, uh, and they have also lots of side effects on top of the uh, addiction pattern. Uh, they can cause nausea, headaches, confusion, uh, some people get nightmares with it. And uh, also a uh, change in the sex drive. And uh, the other things they can have is uh, uh, suicidal thoughts or harming uh, themselves and or others. So which is a serious one, you know, when it comes to becomes life-threatening when you're doing that. So uh, then another class of drug, which is called Buspiron, uh, which is also has it's not actually been approved uh, to use under the age 18, and but I've seen some prescription written for even age 18, uh, and again has a slew of side effects like dizziness, headaches, and nausea, and nervousness, and lightheadedness, and trouble sleeping. The another class of drugs uh, which is used are beta blockers, uh, like a drug like a tenormin or Enderol, and uh, again it has its own side effects. Uh, the most common are fatigue because uh, it also lowers your blood pressure. And uh, so when you have a normal blood pressure and you're taking beta blocker, which blocks the beta cells, 
in the body and uh, can help with it, uh, your anxiety a little bit. But at the same time, it can lower your blood pressure and people can have cold hand, fatigue. And sometimes it also uh, increases asthma and uh, diabetes because the, one of the most common beta cells in the body is pancreas, has lots of beta cells. And when you're blocking the action of beta cells, you're promoting diabetes. So these are, you know, the most uh, common drug which are used for. And uh, when we are in this uh, uh, way uh, of uh, treatment, which is not fixing it, you are creating more problems for yourself. So what are the natural ways uh, we will discuss once we come back after this, uh, uh, the ad um, again? If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. So, uh, you know, coming back to the treatment again, so what are the natural ways of uh, treating the anxiety the one of the one very important is i'm always for freebies so what is freebies breathing is free we all need to breathe and uh, we breathe 16 at least 16 times per minute and uh, if you take a deep breath in and let it out what you're doing is you're bringing in the oxygen and you are saturating your body every cell with oxygen and your body is consuming the uh, oxygen and then you're making carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide itself is very relaxing. So not only oxygen, but the carbon dioxide is becoming relaxing to you. Like when people have a carbon dioxide or con carbon monoxide poisoning, they don't even understand that what's going on with it because such a relaxing, it actually makes your heart to uh, into go into complete failure, uh, just stop because of the saturation of excessive. But we're not going to do with the breathing because breathing will make a normal amount of carbon dioxide and it relaxes your system. So just simple breathing exercise, just take a deep breath through your nose, fill your lungs to a full lung capacity, hold there for a few seconds and let it out to the mouth and repeating that exercise will help you. You might, might have seen your animals like dog and cat or other animals when they are under stress, they're taking deep breath and sighs. The sighing is a natural phenomena where we are bringing in more oxygen into your system and then breathing it out. So you can understand that why somebody, you know, when you are under stress, naturally you sigh more. So this is a natural way of treating your uh, uh, anxiety. Then meditation. Again, meditation is free. So one of the thing is, what is meditation? I see a lot of patients who said, oh, I don't want to do meditation. Uh, and some of even say that, I don't want to change my religion because when I do meditation, I'm going to change my religion. Folks, you're not changing your religion. What meditation is, you are establishing a connection with the mother nature. What is true in the mother nature is true in our body. So when we're sinking, we are sinking like our laptop to the master computer. So we're syncing this body to the mother nature, which is our pharmacy also, because everything changes according to weather. We have different set of hormones coming in. You know, have you seen animals in winter, they develop like a fine wool coat on them, and in these days they're shedding it off. And uh, so this is also happening to us too. We are constantly changing according to the environment. So when we are syncing with the Mother Nature, we are naturally in a healthful state. So meditation is you are syncing with the Mother Nature. So what you can do is you can find a quiet place, sit down and take a deep breath in. And as you breathe in, your focus should be on the breath only, not on anything else. And so you, you be aware of your breathing in and breathing out. There are lots of different techniques. Some uses a sound or mantra, they call it. Some use the visualization technique, looking at an object. Uh, you can look at Mother Mary, if you're Christian, or Christ, or Buddha, or um, Krishna, or Muhammad, or whatever. That does not matter. As long as you're establishing a connection with that identity which you feel has a little more power than you, and you are thinking with that power, 
and you're creating that balance naturally in you. And some people just go on the beach and sit and just look at the waves. Uh, like, you know, this morning we had a wonderful walk on the beach right here in Newport, and it was so calming. It was so beautiful. I think we had a, a different glow on our face after coming from a walk because we were syncing with the Mother Nature. So meditation technique is very phenomenally good, and every parent should create a meditation routine in their families. Uh, sitting with the quiet time, like a, you can have uh, you know, in the morning or in the evening or both times, maybe spend even 10 minutes. So okay, we are not going to uh, talk about anything. We're going to dim the lights, and maybe you can put a very light music on and just trying to sync with that quietness in the mother nature. And uh, I think all of us have that experience when we are quiet, we are listening to mother nature very differently. And I've seen that even room full of 5,000 people, when you sync with the mother nature, the quietness in the mother nature is so beautiful. And there are 5,000 people in a room and there is not a... There's a pin drop silence, and we're sinking with the Mother Nature. And when we sink with the Mother Nature, body has that natural mechanism of healing. The, another method is exercise. There's a tons of studies available. And exercise doesn't mean that you have to uh, lift hundreds of pounds of weight. You can just go for a walk. Brisk walk, 30 to 45 minutes a day, uh, is a phenomenally good way of uh, creating a balance in you, and it has shown to be very powerful anti-anxiety too. The walking is such a natural thing, and I'm not in great favor of joggers. Sorry, joggers. I'm, I've been saying that for 30-some years, and uh, I'm not going to recommend jogging for all the people there, uh, but because the jogging is not good for you for the long-term basis. If you walk, you can walk up to 100 uh, until you die. If you jog, most of the joggers will have bad knees, bad hips by the age of 50, and they will be having hip replacements and knee replacement, which is, again, you're defeating the natural cause of, uh, natural uh, no, purpose of your body. You're putting some artificial things. And if your body is able to heal naturally, why we need all this artificial thing? And again, I'm not saying that artificial limbs or artificial uh, knees and hips doesn't have a place, but they do. But I also see that has become a fashion. And uh, uh, around me, in, even in my family, I've seen a lot of people has that done. And But it can be done naturally. Your body can heal very, very naturally too. So then uh, there are lots of different herbs which we can you know, give to help the whole process of healing. And uh, uh, the, one of the most favorite herbs which I have is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is a prized herb in Ayurvedic medicine. In Ayurvedic medicine, we call it Rasayana. Rasayana means a herb which can be utilized all your life without the, having the side effects. And it's one of the best adaptogen. What that means, that it adapts to body's dysfunctions and allow the normal function to happen in a balanced fashion. So if your body is going into a hyper mode, it's going to bring it back to the normal mode. If your body is going into hypo mode, where it's not functioning good, it's going to also bring it to the back to the balance again. So you can see your body is going into a normal mode all the time when you take ashwagandha. And it's such a non-toxic thing. Uh, in the scientific studies, it has shown the when people go under a stressful situation, a hormone called cortisol, C-O-R-T-I-S-O-L, this cortisol increases in it. And when the cortisol increases in us, it does not allow us to go into normal pattern. This is a very important hormone, which is used for flight and height mechanism. What that means is when we body is under stressful situations, uh, for example, you're walking on a road and all of a sudden an animal jumps on you, and to save your life, you have to run uh, or you face that animal. And that at that time, you see your heart is pumping. Your body is a, uh, in a different shape. Your muscles are getting tighter. and But after some time, that response comes down and you are feeling much better. Uh, so that response has come down uh, and then you're feeling back to the normal. 
So it looks like there is a one more call coming. Uh, go ahead, please. Hello? Hi. Hello. Um, yes. My question is, um, what is it that actually causes the anxiety in youth, and what are some um, proactive actions that we can possibly take or teach to our youth to prevent having this anxiety and prevent them going on that path of, oh, I'm having anxiety, I need to take drugs, you know, or I need what what's a drug-free resolution? Yes. Uh, who is this, please? Oh, um, my name is Nikita. Okay, okay, Nikita. Yes, so, yeah, very, very wonderful question. So one thing is, you know, anxiety, as I said earlier, is a normal response. The anxiety is there to prepare you for the things which you need to do. But when you're not able to come to a resolution and you go on thinking about the same thing again and again, that turns into anxiety disorder. So anxiety is a normal response, but the anxiety is asking you to prepare yourself to get that function done. But when you're not letting that go, you're going into loop and loop and loop, you're creating a anxiety disorder. So what happens when you do that loop and loop and loop, you just, you know, you're going in a like a, a circle and circle and circle again and again, basically you are releasing the hormone, which I was just talking about, cortisol. And this cortisol is very important hormone for us for fighting or protecting ourselves, but it has to be shorter and it cannot be lying there forever. And so most of the time, people who get anxiety disorder, they have a disruption in their normal cortisol production. So either they are producing too much, and either they are you know, uh, uh, making less of it. So over time, the, the kids get more tired, and, and so the, the adrenal gland which make cortisol, they get tired and they're not producing enough. So on a long-term anxiety disorder, people uh, go into adrenal dysfunction, which is called adrenal exhaustion or adrenal fatigue. So what you can do is, again, looking at the situation, what causes the anxiety? So facing or dealing with anxiety is very, very important. So we're looking at the root cause of it, if it is a, a financial situation, maybe creating a financial plan, or if it's a schoolwork or homework, maybe making it the bullet point, I need to do this much work on this time. If it's a uh, marital issue, uh, maybe sit down and talk to your spouse to see what's going on. So what do you need to do a preparedness? Or if you need a help, go and talk to a counselor or your teacher or your mother or your father or you feel comfortable with somebody who, who can really help that process in there. So basically making a plan. And then again, the treatment is simple. You look at what is causing that problem and you're trying to face it. Uh, and you know, you're facing it differently. You do the breathing exercise. You do the meditation. You do your walk. And uh, you also eat healthy food. If you're eating a lot more sugar, which is going to create you a little bit high in the beginning, but then you're going into a loop where you want more and low, high, low, high again and again, and you go on feeding into that loop of uh, eating sugar, you are going to create more anxiety. But if you eat healthy food where you have a good protein and you have a good fiber, uh, which comes from the vegetables, comes from the fruit and uh, grains, whole grains has a good fiber too, uh, and uh, then you have a uh, balanced amount of fruits and nuts and seeds. And nuts and seeds also provide good amount of oils and proteins. And if you're a vegetarian, you can have beans more in your diet. Uh, if you're not a vegetarian, you can add fish and chicken, which will help balance it out. So it's, it's creating a balance and balancing from your routine, what time you're going to wake up, what time you're going to sleep. All those things will help your whole body to create a more balance. And then, you know, if you still have issues rather than going for a drug model, you can try this, some natural compounds. And uh, the first of the natural compounds which I, uh, you know, uh, has is ashwagandha. So, and then, you know, there are other compounds like a lavender, uh, which is very phenomenally good, calming. It has a wonderful aroma to it. And the studies have shown that the results are as good as the valiums or the diazepams or lorazepam. And so you can see these natural compounds are as effective. There is another compound called kava kava, which can be given. Saffron, you know, which is a natural spice, has a wonderful anti-anxiety effect. And there are lots of other things which can be done too. It looks like there is another call coming in. Uh, please go ahead. 
Hi, Dr. Saudi. This is the Bhuti. Um, my question is how, as a family member, we can help someone who is going through a period of depression or anxiety? So, again, uh, Vibhuti is a good question. I think the one, one of the thing is uh, support system. And uh, there is no right and wrong answers for anything. First is listening. What is the problem? Listening is a powerful medicine. And a lot of times when patients come to me as a patient and they have been diagnosed with uh, some diseases and they are very upset at the medical model. They said, doctor told me you have this and this disease, and he walked out of the room. So, and they don't think they have been properly listened. So listening is a powerful tool. And so listening without getting attached, you know, it may be against you what you have done or somebody else in the family, not getting attached to that, that moment and listening to that what is the real cause of it. And when you listen to somebody and without getting attached to that, you are creating a big impact on that person. So he says, oh, wow. He's listening to me or she's listening to me. So first step is listening to it. And then finding the tools, like maybe go for a walk together, okay? And you can listen and you can talk at the same time. And maybe creating a routine of natural going to sleep at proper time. Maybe adding up the food you know, uh, schedule. Okay, we're all going to, as a family, we're going to eat healthy. If you look at it, in current society, the diseases have gone up and up and up the cancers, the diabetes, and the obesity. And this is all because of we are not eating properly. So if you are creating a balanced, healthy nutritional program in your home from breakfast to lunch to dinner, you are also helping that process there, helping that. Too. And again, going for a family meditation, uh, going for a you know walk in the mother nature. There is an interesting uh, study published, uh, Vibhuti, about a you know, people who has gone into the mother nature. These are all cancer patients. And when they went to the mother nature for a walk for one day a week, their immune system was up for seven days. So you can see why we need to sync with the mother nature. And this is a free medicine again. So as a family, we can create a wonderful program of going together in the mother nature. You know, one of my passion is going in the mother nature. I don't like the concrete. I don't like the high-rise building. Yes, they are wonderful to look at it, but that's not my passion. I don't like those, you know, big, big buildings that are going into a big, big uh, crowds because you're not creating a connection with the mother nature. So at least once a week, we can go for a walk with the family and in the mother nature on the waterfront. Uh, so that, I think that's the best way of helping the whole family member, listening to them, creating a balance nutritional meal for them or for your whole family, uh, going for a walk with their family in the mother nature, in the jungle. It, it has to be the mother nature. It doesn't, it does not belong if you go for a shopping in the, uh, in Bellevue mall, because that's not going to, yes, it may be good, but you know, it may be more stressful for you, you know, because once you spend more credit card and the hubby or this other spouse is not going to be very happy with you because you spend more money. So I think creating a balance is the key here. And uh, yes, you know, shopping is fine. It's not unbelievably wrong with it. But I think some of the time we also shop things which we don't want to shop. And because there is a good sale going on, and we may go on buying 20 jeans, which maybe does not have any use for our, uh, you know, on a daily life. So again, the, the simple process. Meditation, yoga, breathing, walking, eating your food properly and healthy creates a balance in there. So uh, we are, uh, uh, you know, we are we are talking about what we can do with the uh, natural process of healing and uh, the things which come. The other thing which you can do, the the herb wise, is a saffron. Saffron is a wonderful spice which is available almost in every store. Yes, it is a little expensive, but it's still less expensive than a lot of drugs, by the way. And uh, you just don't need a lot of it. You know, these studies are done on 50 milligrams, which is a 30 milligrams, sorry, which has very small strand. If you can take a small strands of it, uh, it will be around 30 milligrams. Uh, we also have a product uh, which is called Joy Lift, which is available from the health food store. Uh, you can utilize that. Ashwagandha is also available from the health food store uh, by the company Ayurved, R U V E D, and you can take those. These are very wonderful anti-anxiety medications, uh, herbal medications, which I will call them. And, uh, you know, there has been stressful situations in my personal life, 
and uh, I think the ashwagandha was my savior. And if anybody uh, has been in my situation or uh, my uh, family situation, they would have been on four or five drugs. And my savior and my wife's savior, my son's savior was ashwagandha. Uh, and at one time, we were taking four to six capsules of ashwagandha, 500 milligram every three, four hours. And we would consume ashwagandha, say, around 15 to 20 capsules a day. And uh, it, the, the, what has happened with us was very horrible, but we were able to survive through the horrible period. And after three months, we did not need that much heavy doses. We were going to two capsules three times a day, and now we don't need it. I know we still use ashwagandha, but not because we're anxious, because ashwagandha has lots of other uh, wonderful properties. So ashwagandha has, you know, I've tested it in so many patients in my and personal life that it has wonderful effects. The other, uh, the herb which we can use is a kava kava, and kava kava is a very wonderful anti-anxiety medicine. It has been given a bad rap because it causes some liver inflammation. But if you are using kava kava, you should not be using alcohol. So alcohol and kava kava does not combine together very well. So I think we will have a little short break for the ad here. And uh, sorry, there is a, one more call coming. Okay, go ahead, caller, please. Uh, hi there, uh, uh, Dr. Sodi. This is uh, Raj. I'm calling from Bay Area. First of all, thank you for sharing all your experience. And I have got a quick question. Uh, my question is that I'm a recovering patient from my shoulder pain. And over the period of like last three, four months, what has happened is I, I lost my sleep. Uh, it is offset with like two, two and a half hours. So I go to bed at 10 o'clock, but I go to bed at 10 o'clock. And because of that, I wake up late next morning and, and it's like anxiety building up. So can you suggest something which like I can go to the bed at the right time, can sleep, any any supplements? Because I talked to my physician, he has only one answer. You know, start taking melatonin 5 milligram or 10 milligram. And I don't want to take those sleeping pills. Rather, I would go with the natural supplement for that. Yeah, very good question. Uh, the one thing which you can do is uh, you can take a uh, herb ashwagandha because what ashwagandha does it, it drops your the cortisol levels so which are kicked in and it's also anti-inflammatory so also help your shoulder it also rev up your hormones like testosterone and testosterone and DHEA which is revved up by the ashwagandha also has a natural healing mechanism it build up the muscle mass and so your muscle will get stronger. The another thing which you can take is a phosphatidyl serine, uh, which is we have a product called IUFOS. So what the IUFOS does, it because you know if you're not sleeping at night, your cortisol levels are going up, and so when your cortisol are up, you're not secreting your natural melatonin and serotonin, and uh, you are not able to help the whole process of uh, natural kicking into a sleep mechanism. So if you can take the IUFOS in the one in the morning and one in the noon, what it does, it brings your cortisol level naturally to the lowest level. And these are non-addictive, by the way. So if you don't take ashwagandha, one day it's not going to be, oh, my God, I'm not going to sleep. If you don't take IUFOS for one day, you're not going to be addictive on it. So this this way, you know, you, you what you're doing, you're sinking in with the natural rhythm of the body because at night the cortisol level has to drop down to the bare minimum so that the serotonin and melatonin which your body makes can kick in. And I'm not against melatonin, but your body also makes melatonin. So I will create a situation where your body will produce natural melatonin and you get into the more uh, balance first. Looks like there's another call coming in, please. Go ahead, caller. Hello? Hello? Okay, so it looks like we may have dropped this call. Uh, so, okay, so the, I think we are leaving, just there are only a couple minutes left, and if you're still on the line, you can call us back, and we will be happy to answer the question. So the bottom line is, again, yes, anti-anxiety drug may have a role, but it's not a fix. So you have to keep, the fix is your body. That's why I started this program. Your body is your natural pharmacy. Uh, this is actually all you know, triggered in after I wrote an article in a, a medical journal, and uh, so one of my my patients said, Dr. Sodi, why don't you start this program? So I started this program, and your body is a natural pharmacy. You can do it 
what you need to do is sync with the mother nature you have to eat healthy you have to do your yoga your breathing exercise your meditation program and once you do that everything else you don't have a anxiety you don't have sleep issues you don't have cancer you don't have heart disease you don't have blood pressure you don't have any disease because your body is your natural pharmacy 